And let's see who's the first one in. It's going to be, it's probably Rita Tayanaka will be the first one in today. Let's see. Nope, we got somebody in. That is not Rita. Jackie was the first one in today. Let's see how long it takes Wayne Woodyard to long in today. That's going to be our trick since he posted his picture on Facebook. I don't know if y'all saw that Wayne uh, decided to show an interesting mask picture and it's his under things on his head or, or paws. I'm not judging whose they are, but I did ask him if he used Tide. So welcome back Orange County Realtors. Cassie C, I already, I got it already. Orange County Realtors, I know y'all rebranded, but I'm an old person, Cassie. We get into bad habits and we just, we stick with them. Although I will say, um, see, there's the first one. Hey, Dan. And I got all caps too. See, Jonathan? See, there's one. And Dan, we'll tell you what we're talking about here in a second. Although we both were admiring in our, our pre-conversation the sheer amount of energy that you have in your genuinely awesome self. So I'm glad to see you're here today. And let's see if Eileen's here yet. Eileen will be here to represent the Women's Council. And y'all make sure and thank her for being the volunteer leader this year because this is not the year anybody envisioned for volunteer leadership, but here we go. And hey, Jean. Oh, and don't forget y'all, as I'm reminding, oh, as I'm scanning the list of attendees, cause y'all know this is like all the networking we get. Make sure you go to your chat block and change your default from all panelists, which is all panelists is the default. There's a little arrow, hit that down arrow and change it to all panelists and attendees if you want everyone to see your awesomeness and not just me and uh, staff over here, you know, we're glad to see you. Hey, Dorinda. All right, so I see my friends are showing up. Somebody's got the hand raised. Hey, David, I don't know what to do with the hand up, so I'm just gonna raise my hand back at you and wave. You'll have to hit the chat block to say something. And if you just raised it because you were testing the Zoom capabilities, then good job. And there you are, and let's see. You took your hand down, so I guess you figured out what you were doing. I'm not being ugly. I don't, don't know what to do with it. So just a reminder, as we're about to kick off session two today, you can chat block and say hello to everyone. And I see Tina and Jackie and Dan and Dorinda and Jean are already over here being cheerful in the chat block at 8.30, so good job. If you have a question, you can hit me up in the Q&A if that is the most convenient thing for you, and I'll do my best to monitor. And I hope that you were able to join us yesterday. I think we had a good session. There is a recording. So if you're sweet to your staff, they will probably hook you up with a copy of the recording. Look, Jean, it's like I was having some telepathy with you. It was recorded. And so staff will have that for you so that you can find that. Jeff came back again, is using lowercase today. Good job. Hey, May and David and Shirley and Tina. Oh, see, I'm so glad to see friends over here. So if you had a, a lingering question from yesterday, feel free to dial it in. And we're going to have a whole different angle today. And this is one of my newer presentations. So if you're one of my people who I've met several years out there, out and about in realtor world, you probably haven't heard this one. This was something I created in Houston last year. And I did that after I stole Bob Hale's dessert off the table and made Bob laugh. And y'all know that's like a, a really tricky thing to do. So it was like my big win of 2019. And so I think we're mostly logging in and like many realtors, um, you are the fancy ones for being on time and we'll have some more that will come along later. So let me get our slide deck up and where y'all can look at it. Do, 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 do. All right, today we have a whole new angle for y'all. And if you're like me, You've already seen that word and you're kind of cringing a little bit because any of us that are, are medium aged, and I won't say how old we are, but I've already had to admit to how long it takes me to have my hair did. And if y'all know, bottle blonde is not an easy thing to create when you are medium aged, but it's how you cover up the battleship gray. And full disclosure, I would totally go gray if I had something pretty, like some of y'all look like a Q-tip and it's very cute, but I, I look like a battleship and that is just not attractive. And so I go with bottle blonde and my normal color is buried up in there, but I did see it during the coronavirus times while I was waiting on an appointment with my hair, um, a hair bestie. 
and he was getting horrified by looking at me in the videos and then he needed some cash. And so we did home hair. And by the way, we were talking about your new shutdown with your um, state here. So it's perfect timing for us to be thinking effectively about how we can make our real estate lives better. So as we're thinking about making our real estate lives better, that's one of the big focus I've heard from many realtors during the coronavirus era here. And I probably should have mentioned to y'all the way I'm referring to this time is as the great unknown. I refuse to call this a new normal because there ain't nothing normal about what's going on, y'all. And I don't like it and I'm not happy about it. And it's caused a lot of consternation in my world. Although it's been kind of amazing to spend this much time at home with my kids and spending time cooking because I love cooking and my garden looks rocking this year. And I've never spent this much time with my husband and it's good to find out we still get along. So that's all been a nice perk of coronavirus, but I ain't calling this a new normal. And so if y'all think this is a good time, then um, high five to you because that's really cool. But when you think about it, we've had a lot of time for introspection and we've had a lot of time to think about how we can make our lives better and how we can reprioritize relationships and how we can reprioritize our real estate business. And as we were talking yesterday, and about our database. And we talked about not our sphere and not our context, but our people and how we can, instead of nurturing our database, we can love our people. And it's all about this, how do we reconnect? How do we go deeper in our relationships in a way that's meaningful? Because that's what changes your real estate business. And so when you're thinking about that, I'm just gonna consider that I'm not the same person today that I was in February. Would any of y'all agree with me on that? That something during coronavirus time, during this great unknown has changed you. And it could be from that introspection. It could be from the increased time at home. It could be from the increased time with people you're really close to. It could be from increased solitude because the coronavirus time has really exacerbated loneliness and solitude and it's changed our real estate businesses. It's changed our practices. And life was always changing, right? I mean, if you look at who you are today versus who you were 10 years ago, depending on where you are in life, that could be a, an incremental change, but it could be night and day. Oh, go back 20 years, holy smokes. The me of 20 years ago, not even remotely close of the me of today. If I go back 30 years and 40 years, it's, it's just, I, I don't even know how I recognize myself. And so we're in this time when we're different and maybe it was caused by past jobs and maybe it's past relationships and maybe it's you before the divorce or it's you before kids or it's, it's you before things. There was the broken hip and there was this moment and you know those seminal moments in your life, right? In fact, when you go to a listing, how many of y'all have been on a listing appointment and you asked the homeowner, hey, when did y'all get the roof done? And they're like, um, I think it was the year that Jamie broke her leg. Is that the year? And you're like, wait, it's a roof. I mean, don't you have a receipt or something? And I don't know why people can't like keep track of their houses, but they are attaching roofs to life events, right? And they attach things to different items and it's not even related, but you start realizing there's these, these pivot points and the pivot points that happen in life change us. And how many of y'all, I mean, honestly, would go back to the you of 10 or 15 or 20 years ago and tell the you of then, honey, know this. I always think about that episode of the office. And if y'all don't know, the nine seasons of the office have applications like every day in your life and there was this trick that Jim was playing on Dwight in season three where he was sending faxes to future Dwight and it was like future Dwight the Paul coffee gets poisoned at 8 a.m today and Dwight's like no because he thinks he's talking to himself from the future and we would right I would go back to the me of a long time ago and tell me when to shut my mouth because I do have athletes mouth a lot because I, I put foot in mouth syndrome is like my number one thing. 
And many of y'all know the same thing. I know Wayne Woodyard does. I didn't look to see if Wayne's logged in yet or not. So make sure y'all are poking at him if he is, because you know, he's, he's my, my favorite to poke at because he don't mind. But I will tell you that when I look at where my seminal moments are, real estate was one of them because I came to real estate from chainsaw sales. See, and some of y'all might be like, wait, wait, what? Because most people come to real estate from normal jobs. Well, I was the only woman on the sales force for Husqvarna, which is premium, right? So premium chainsaws, weed trimmers, and lawnmowers. And that shift from corporate life of expectations and checklists and rules to a world of uh, no checklist, no expectations, no rules. Here's your phone. Here's a three ring binder with some training and go call your cousins and friends and good luck. But it was a big shift. And so there was the Lee before real estate and there's the Lee after real estate. And there's then after that happens, you have the before you became a broker and then before you did this and before you did that. And my old guard, yeah, the real estate, remember the book? I came in with the book, loved the book. And then we went to the green screen right after I got in and I'm like, wait, ho, 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 green screen, what is this? And I was still young and hip and cool, but I freaking loved the book. And then suddenly now we're on smartphones and some of y'all don't have the foggiest idea what a book even looks like. You heard about it, but if you want to see it, watch the money pit, that old movie with Tom Hanks from like 1983, their realtor has the book in it, and so you'll have like a little moment, but anyway, your life changes. And one of the biggest changes that I experienced in the last little while is for those of y'all that don't know me and we haven't spent any time together, you might not know. I ran for Congress last year, which frankly, because of coronavirus, <laughs> it may as well be a hundred years ago because it feels like a different era. But in 2019, I threw my hat into the ring to run for office. And it was a big changing moment for me. And I started to realize that some things really start to mess with you when you go through one of the seminal life changes, whether it's kids, divorce, whatever. And in today's world, we realize that it's not the same space that we were in before. So the change hits us in different spaces. It changes who you are and how you react, but it, in the world, we've changed who we are and how we react to one another. So I was mentioning before, so some of the things that we've learned from the people who came after the MLS book and our young people create a lot of vocabulary. And one of those pieces of vocabulary they've created is that word ghosting, right? So you saw the title of the presentation, you're like ghosting. Yes, I know what that means. I know what ghosting is. Well, ghosting is this, I mean, it's a real word now, right? And when you first heard it, you were like, oh, I, it makes sense. It's a, it's a word that maybe should have existed all along. And it comes along with this concept of vanishing. And you realize that's one of the changes that's happened that's maybe not for the best. At all your seminal moments in life, change can be amazing and drive you forward. And then there's the change that stops you and even drives you backward. I was having a conversation with a coaching client about telephone calls and she's not young. Okay. So she's a little older than medium. She's like, I don't make phone calls. I said, why don't you make phone calls? Because nobody wants to talk to me. Why doesn't anybody want to talk to you? Because they don't talk to people on the phone either. Why don't they talk to people on the phone? Because nobody calls them. And I was like, do you hear the circle you just made? Because telephone calls used to hold us together. In-person visits held us together. Well, coronavirus has wiped out the in-person visits for those of y'all that were still doing door knocking and visiting. And the telephone calls have diminished because of technology. And so ghosting appeared, right? And so when ghosting appeared, you start to realize that it's caused a ton of angst. And you know how this feels in real estate, right? You're at an open house and you meet some nice people and y'all are talking, hanging out, making friends, making eye contact, gelling, 
with Jean and Holland, peas and carrots. I like these people. Later on, you text them and you're like, hey, just checking in. Glad to meet y'all, blah, blah, blah. And you know what you get back? The three dots, which I think is the worst thing ever invented in the history of technology. And you see the three dots and you're like, oh, oh, yay, yay. Oh, they like me too. <gasps> and you keep waiting. And well, I, and then the three dots go away. And you know how you feel? You feel small. Why do we feel so small when we see that fraying of a relationship? Well, ghosting is causing the fraying of relationships and it's exacerbating what's already there. And so you start feeling good and you feel down and we take it personally. Have y'all noticed that? Think about it. Go back 20 years in time. Oh no, actually let's go back. Mm, I have to go back further now. Go back 40 years or 35 years, whatever. Go to the mid eighties. Okay. Some of y'all probably weren't born then, but most of y'all were, I can tell. So if you were around in the mid eighties and the phone rang and you didn't answer it, what was the outcome? There, there was no outcome, right? Because this is the days before caller ID, before voicemail, before even the answer machine with little tiny tapes that you would save that person you had a crush on, you would save their message and play it, play it, play it, play it, until so you wore the tape out and made it thin. But that's all you had. And when you called somebody back, it, it pulled things together because you had to reach back, right? Well, now technology has told us you don't have to reach back. You no longer have to. And so we didn't take it personally in the 80s when we couldn't reach somebody because there was no way to be reached. But now in an era of 24 seven reaching, we take it personally. And as realtors, you take it really personally because you're people pleasers. That's how you're wired. You are wired to talk to people and make them happy and get them excited and help them make good decisions and to be their advocate and to be their supporter and their encourager. And you are so good at this. And when you're doing all of that encouraging and positivity and it's not responded to, you're like, oh, it's me. I didn't explain the house right. I didn't tell them P-I-T-I. -I. Oh, I didn't do this right. I suck. When maybe... They just didn't respond because they weren't ready or they didn't respond because they just didn't want to. Not you, but they were in the middle of a meeting or they got distracted or eight texts came in and you just got lost in the fray, but you didn't think about those details because you took it differently. And so we got to think about what ghosting is doing to our business because it's killing our transactions. And you know what's happening with this, right? Ghosting, by the way, there's an actual definition for it now, which isn't this crazy? The act or practice of abruptly cutting off all contact with someone. All right, how does that specifically damage real estate when buyers ghost you after you've worked really hard for them or when they're under contract, which is the worst? Sellers ghost you about the time you get an offer after they've had 47 showings and they called you after every single one and now they hide from you and they vanish. Other agents ghost us. Our people we love ghost us. And it's not that they said, I need a minute. And it's not call me in six months. That's not ghosting, right? Ghosting is just vanishing. And I think that as real estate professionals who are already in a weird space because of COVID and our buyers are in a weird space because of COVID and our sellers are in a weird space because of COVID. And now we all are separated, but needing each other and we're separated and falling apart, but people want to move forward. They don't know how to move forward and you're trying to move people forward. Don't know how to get there. This gets really exacerbated because we've got all this other stuff going on that has nothing to do with us. So how do we solve for this? We have to figure out how to solve for it. Because the three dots are causing you to believe that somebody doesn't need you. One of the earliest things we teach in real estate training, y'all know what we tell you, right? If somebody ignores you this time, you do what? You reach out again. The average buyer or seller of any product requires seven touches before you 
convert them into customer or client status. But how many do we put up with? A good agent responds once. That's a really good agent. 44% of people don't respond at all ever. And when I read that stat, I was like, that's pretty optimistic. But we'll just give the, uh, the upper hand and say 56% of agents respond to the one time. I think that people respond less when they see the three dots and they go away because they're internalizing it. And in real estate, you can't internalize things. It's kind of like the idea that if you show somebody 10 houses over the course of three months, what in your head told you they were going to buy all 10? They're probably not unless they're an investor or a hedge fund. And even then they're not going to get all 10 because you're in bidding wars. So if you have 10 houses, you've shown them how many they mostly going to buy one and they're going to say what to the other nine. No, thank you. Not my house. Ha ha ha. No chance. So the dot, dot, dot might just mean not this one, not today which means you can't just give up because friends, you're letting this thing run your life. You're letting it run your brain. You're letting it run your energy. You're letting it run your business and your outlook. And it's all because some coding person in their mother's basement somewhere designed the three dots. And what happens is when you start to feel beat down, you stop conveying the message of who you are as a realtor. You stop telling people, man, I live to solve problems. I live to educate my clients. I live to help you know what's going on out there. I'm going to get all the economic updates and help you apply it to your life so you can make good decisions. And you lose all of that opportunity to convey it because the three dots shut you down. Because in your head, you know what you told yourself? They found somebody else. They moved on. And friends, they didn't always because they've been ghosted too. And I'll tell you that when we think about how it hurts us with buyers, you, you think they've just moved on. And with sellers, you think they've sold it on Facebook Marketplace or FISBO. How many of y'all have made that assumption? Or you went to Zillow and saw that your listing suspect had put it up by owner on Zillow and you got all hurt by that? And that's why they cut off communication. Well, maybe they cut off communication because they wanted to give it a minute. So you know all the reasons they mess with you because they're trying to save a dollar. They don't know yet. They're interviewing. They're not ready, whatever. But why are we ghosting each other? When I want to think about what we should be reprioritizing in our real estate lives, we have to reprioritize our relationships with each other. How many of y'all have called an agent I have, have the situation right now. I've been dealing with for two and a half weeks. I need information on a trailer park for sale. Okay, look, and don't you make fun of buying a trailer park because that is like buying an ATM and it's amazing. But the agent is apparently 1,000 years old and he cannot figure out any of this stuff. And when he vanishes, he vanishes for four days. And I'll poke and poke and poke and poke and finally he'll reappear with one answer to the 18 questions and then he vanishes again. Well, what happens when another agent does that? Is my opinion of his client good? No, I'm thinking his client must be an idiot for hiring him and is that fair? No, it's not fair and I know I'm not being fair. Like you've never thought the same thing. And so we, are, we become separated from each other. And when I, the buyer agent, am separated from the seller agent, that means that my buyer who's behind me in fiduciary and the seller who's behind the seller's agent in fiduciary even further apart, how do we pull deals together? I will tell y'all that coming up as a realtor in Concord, North Carolina, which is a suburb of Charlotte, and we're about 100,000 people, so it's a pretty good-sized little city, but if you grew up here, everywhere you go, you see somebody you knew. The first house I ever sold I had my paperwork all fixed up. I was going to go deliver it to the other agent because, and then this is before fax machines. You didn't want to waste all of somebody's little because it's dot matrix back then. So we had to go to hand deliver the offer. And my daddy said, well, we're going to go to the Hardy's on church street because we're going to meet her behind the dumpster. And I was like, but daddy, why are we going to meet the other agent behind the dumpster? And he said, that's where we do real estate. I said, all right. We went over and met the other agent at like eight o'clock at night behind the dumpster at the Hardy's on Church Street, which for the record, if you come to visit me in Concord, 
I will tote you over there so you can see where the dumpster is at the Hardy's on Church Street because sure as shooting, there it is. And there wasn't one real estate deal going on there, y'all. There were three because agents were hanging out. That was just where agents hung out to exchange paperwork back in the day. And the thing about it is, in the era before smartphones and before emails and text, there was an agent here and an agent here. And we changed paperwork and shook hands and looked each other in the eye and said, I'm a human, you're a human. And we're more likely then to talk and have conversations and put the whole deal together in a way that is beneficial to the buyer over here and the seller over here. I feel that when we start ignoring each other because it's inconvenient or we're busy or we had multiple offers or whatever our excuse is, we keep each other apart. But we know that the longer you're in real estate, y'all can look around the, the room at any Orange County Realtors meeting, you know the same faces because survivors in real estate our survivors. And we do a lot of business together over the course of a decade and two decades and three decades. The client you might deal with once, twice, three times if you're really good at maintaining relationships. But the agent, man, we're hurting each other when we hide from each other. And we've lost the ability to say, man, I'm sorry. I, I dropped the ball on delivering the disclosures, on delivering this. And we lose that because we're not talking. We have to fix this, y'all, because the ability of a buyer to win a house has a lot to do with you as agent and the relationships you've built. And many of you know this, you've won a multiple offer scenario because of you, who you are and how you communicate and the relationship you have with the other agent. And the other agent is better able to vet offers when they know the agents on the other side, which means when we make mistakes and when errors happen, we have to have the ability to say, there's got to be a better way to do this. And that means looking back. So taking this moment of introspection, this change agent that coronavirus is in our lives and looking back at where we've screwed up, where you say, I'm going to be a good girl here for a minute. Cause frankly, you know, women are really good apologists. We're just raised that way as a gender kind of a thing. And I know it's broad brush and it's not specific. Don't be tarring and feathering me. But in general, women as heavy communicators tend to say, well, I, I'm, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. But what you have to do is own it. And if you've dropped the ball with an agent, if you've dropped the ball with a seller, if you've dropped the ball with a buyer or a relationship, you got to figure out how to go back in and solve for it. Because that's one of the reasons we start becoming the one who ghosts. That's the other side of it, right? We often look at everything in life from this personal perspective of I got ghosted by a buyer, I got ghosted by a seller, I got ghosted by a colleague, and we forget that there are uh, buyers and sellers that we have ghosted and agents that we have ghosted too. And so when you think about this, we've, we've got to stop hurting each other. And it's amazing that what's happened in the, in a world that we're in right now, it's very uncomfortable, right? The uncomfortable world has said, be careful what you say. And when you explain what you say, you're now in fear that you've offended somebody and that you've stepped over some invisible line because the lines keep moving. When in reality, it's the humanity in us that we, that we had before the era of text only that allowed you to accidentally offend and be forgiven and given grace. So if you're not telling somebody what's going on, You've hidden from the agent. And let's just talk about it for a second. Why do we ghost? And Karen, by the way, I see that you piped up. I'm, I'm for Karen's benefit because I love her. Let me jump back over here to the definition for, of ghosting. It's hiding from people, honey. Just hiding. Drop them cold. Stop talking to the buyer. Stop talking to the seller. Stop talking to the agent. And actually, I'll point out to you here, where I see it the most in real estate is when things go south. Have y'all noticed this too? You've got a scenario where there's a problem with inspections, a problem with appraisal, a problem with survey, mainly a problem with financing, and you can't raise up the other side. And why do we, why do we hide from each other? Why do we ignore and avoid each other when things go south? Frankly, for many of y'all, I think it's because you 
are trying to solve it yourself. You're like, let me, let me just fix it. Let me fix it right quick. And then I won't have to tell them anything bad because again, you're realtors that are people pleasers and you like happy outcomes and you're hiding from the bad outcome because you're desperately thinking you can fix it anyway. Instead of just saying, man, let me lean into this and say, I'm sorry, I think we screwed up over here. We didn't get the radon results back in time and now we've got radon at 12 pico curies per liter of air. So we've got like a whole x-ray shop going on here. And I know we're outside of our dates, but can you work with me? Because ghosting comes when you make the assumption that something can't be solved. What if instead we make the assumption that we can solve things, that we make the assumption that we are actually indeed great problem solvers? Because friends, that's what you're paid for. That's why you make thousands of dollars because you are a professional problem solver. In three words, that's what a realtor is. So how do we start solving the communication gap that comes from an underlying problem that we're hiding from that we should be solving? Well, I think part of it is that we fell into the trap of HGTV and Modern Family. And why those two? Well, that's the place you see real estate in the public eye most often. And on HGTV, how many problems are there? None, because on House Hunters, they look at three houses in 30 minutes and sit by the water and pick one. And everything's great. And there's never an appraisal issue. There's never a survey issue. There's never anything wrong. And so, do we ghost buyers and sellers because something went wrong in our transaction and we assumed we should have troubleshot it and found it earlier that we're not perfect? You don't have to be perfect. Think about what else you see on Modern Family. What's Phil Dunphy? He's kind of a bumbling buffoon who wanders into real estate deals and they happen to sell and you don't, again, see any of the finagling that goes on in the back end. And when he has an inner action with somebody it might be this much real life and it's this much craziness we just aren't solving for it you have to solve for ghosting by being honest it's a huge change in how you look at things because honesty we often think about it as taking sides but honesty really means moving into neutral space and what do i mean by that well the honesty comes with another agent of my lender made a mistake. They didn't do X and we've got to solve for this. My client's aware. I need you to be aware where you put on your moderated voice. You put on your moderated language. You don't get all defensive and mad. You just say just the facts, ma'am. Here's what's going on. And you're a messenger for the client. Cause if the goal is to make the client happy, we have to find a way to get to the middle. It also means that when you're in neutral territory and you receive the bad news, you have to figure out how to say that person is a messenger. This is the scenario we have. We're going to have to solve for it so that you can take it to your client and say, we're not panicking, but here's what we're dealing with. To say, we've got to stay focused here. I think that's why Switzerland's been able to stay out of all of these altercations over time. As they said, we're staying focused. We're focused on staying neutral. We're the Red Cross. We are the, we're going to be right here in the middle. And that's what the best realtors do. You can still be a great fiduciary and a bulldog defending your clients, but you can do it without causing so much consternation that people hide from you. And you can see the same thing happen with sellers. If you've ever been on a listing appointment, seller didn't like the numbers, seller didn't like the upgrades required, seller didn't like any of the market data, and they get defensive. What do realtors tend to do? There's two things realtors do. The first one is realtors cave quickly. They're like, you're right. Let's just don't do any upgrades and you want to price it 50 above market. That's fine. We'll just change it if the price doesn't work. I'm fine with that. Why do realtors cave so quickly? Because they're afraid of loss. They're afraid of being ghosted by the seller lead. And they're also afraid of confrontation. The other thing realtors will do if they're confronted with this seller situation to get defensive. Like you asked me what was wrong with the house and I told you, and you asked me the price and I gave it. And there's a, there's a defensive mechanism that kicks up. Well, now you're pushing yourself this way and it pushes the seller back. It repels them. And so when you think about that, you've got to realize that this is number one job you perform as a realtor. And what do we know about Switzerland? Does everybody know they're neutral? 
oh yeah, y'all saw this and you like Switzerland, they're neutral, they're the middle ground. As realtors, do people know that we're willing to help become Switzerland when they're in the middle of a contentious situation? And all this goes into, again, communication. What do we tell people about who we are and how we conduct business? They're looking for solutions. Does Switzerland provide solutions? It often does, because why? If you can come to the neutral territory and talk your way through it, you can figure it out. You're not gonna figure it out on enemy territory over here or enemy territory over here. So, is there a reason to use a human realtor instead of an AI or an AR or an app or a website? Maybe the reason people use a realtor is to get that enhanced communication, to get the enhanced conversation that's going to say, we're going to figure out a solution here. Because y'all, this is the number one thing you do is solve problems. And you cannot solve problems by hiding from them. It's no different in your relationship life. It's no different with your kids. It was never any different at school. And you know what? I will tell you as well, you know what Switzerland has that we need more of in the real world? They have good manners. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever been to Switzerland? People are nice and they're polite. I'd like to know what happened to good manners in the real world. They seem to have gone the way of the dinosaur. But what if realtors bring it back? Because what do manners bring into a situation? Calm and grace and maybe a starting place for a good conversation. I always wonder about this because in my experience running for office, I will tell you the, the most painful thing about that process was there was very little in the way of manners and grace and peace. Because as it turns out, the internet, while it has made our real estate lives faster and easier, oh, it's made it so much easier, right? I can just text you instead of talking to you. And it also causes people to say things they wouldn't say out loud. And my question for you is if you think politics is painful, you're already in your head, you, mm -hmm, that's right. And you don't like your elected officials. And I don't really care what party you are. There's somebody somewhere you don't like because I have yet to meet the person who loves 100% of their elected officials. If I ever meet that person, I'm just gonna automatically medicate them because they'll need it. And so if you know that there's issues out there, have you ever asked yourself why we wind up with elected officials that we just don't like? Did we ever consider that maybe we should have been a little more Switzerland in our actions and a little less contentious? Because when I ran for office, I ran with a desire to help my community and to be a voice of reason to say, man, we need some cheerfulness in politics. We need somebody with the desire to find solutions and to work with people and listen and problem solve. It's what realtors do. We find solutions. It's what we do. I can do this. And the minute that you decide to do that, people decide they want to say the ugliest things to you. People that don't know you say ugly things and they say it in all caps with lots of exclamation points. They say really awful things. So if you've ever asked yourself why we have the kind of elected officials we have, maybe you're part of the problem. If you're the person who's ever gone to a website and added a comment, because y'all know the comment threads are like troll heaven. Stay out. It's under the bridge. Be the billy goat scruff on top of the bridge, not the troll underneath. And so when you think about it, if you've ever gone to a comment, you've typed something like this. A good person reads that and hurts. And then they say, I, I, don't, I don't wanna get hurt and they move away from the process. The person who reads that and is like, oh, you wanna fight, let's fight. Have we created the elected officials that we've got now from our desire to be unkind? Do we create contentious relationships with other agents by saying things in Facebook groups like that one really awful, and y'all know the one that's bad MLS photos. It's got, I don't know, 50 or 60,000 members and agents will go in there and post photos of other people's listings. Can you believe this? Look at these clowns, look at this hoarding, look at this, look at this, saying ugly things about somebody else's listing. Do you think that that makes the other realtor better? 
Do you think that the seller would feel good if they saw that? No, we forgot the best sides of ourselves. And when social media first came out, I honestly thought it was good, right? You're reconnecting with people and it felt good and you liked getting relationships started and conversations going and then it, it turned a little mean girl. So when you think about that, you have to ask yourself, how, how do we serve in a world that does choose the, the mean girl attitude? If, if we each individually are going to fix this, how do we go back to being a little more Switzerland? I learned how to stand up a little bit. And what do I mean by stand up? We're in a, a, an era right now in the United States, and in fact, worldwide, where there's a lot of talk and a lot of movement going on. And what does it look like? In some regards, it's positive and helpful and moving conversations in a good place and creating some really good dialogue. And in other ways, it's ugly and nasty and mean. Standing up doesn't mean standing up and knocking somebody else down when you stand up. It means learning how to have a voice that is thoughtful and helpful, focused on solutions and kind. It also means standing up for the person next to you, not at their expense. And how do we do that in a world that does ghost you if you say something with which they disagree? I think it goes back to grace and kindness and attitude and what you're feeding out there into the world. And what does this matter with buyers and sellers? Well, I'll tell you, one of the top things sellers want from their agent, they want somebody who will stand up for them. What do buyers want? They want somebody that will stand up for them. And you're not standing up for your clients at the exclusion of other people. It's because that's your fiduciary responsibility. In fact, go back and look at your licensure stuff from the state commission. Look at what the word fiduciary means. Look at what you signed up for. You signed up to protect somebody with your best skill, care, and diligence. Isn't that how we all want somebody to stand up for us with skill, care, and diligence? Isn't that how you want to work with other agents to know that on the other side of the transaction, they too are working with skill, care, and diligence? You elect people that will work with skill, care, and diligence. And the way that you get there is by telling people, I am willing to stand up for you and I'll do it in a way that's positive and communicative and helps people move forward. And when you're thinking about it in those terms, I want you to think about, again, that situation in that Facebook group, right? So we have that bad MLS photos. And by the way, if you're a member of that, just I, get out of this poison, right? Don't, don't drink poison. Although if you remember the old movie, Arsenic and Old Lace, y'all remember that? It's like from the, I don't know, 30s or 40s. And she was feeding all the old guys arsenic in small doses until they died. Poison gets into your system and sometimes you don't know that it's there until it builds up and then you're done. Don't, don't do that, right? And so if you see an agent out there that's in a transaction with you and they're not operating with skill, care, and diligence, have you ever invited them to a class by Orange County Realtors? Have you ever invited them to a class that would help them get their CRS designation or invited them to a women's council meeting? What if, instead of picking fights online with each other, we reach out to the agents that we think aren't doing it right and brought them into a place where they could get better too. You have to think about how we want things to be better. If we want things to be better, we invite people into a better space. We don't push them away from us. It's a different way to think about things. If you want your buyers to win in multiple offers, do you call and scream at the listing agent? I had a house that sold, it closed two weeks ago and went under contract in May. You know, 14 offers on the property like everything else. Well, one of the agents called and lit me up, like screamed at me. We were still accepting offers at this time to, to let you know, we were not like under contract. She lit me up because she didn't like the price on the house. And I said, friend, if you don't like the price, y'all just bring the offer you want to bring. Well, she's hollering me the price is too low. And I was like, not really sure what to do with this conversation. She was hot under the collar, but her screaming at me, did that encourage me to go to my seller and say, let's totally pick this offer because she's gonna scream at me the whole way through. It's gonna work out terribly and we're gonna, it's gonna the whole process is gonna suck. So let's totally pick, I mean, what, what, what? 
So no, what I did was after she unloaded and I hung up the phone, I sent her back a link and I said, here's a link to the pricing specialist class. If you don't like how I price houses, here, go take the class and see where it came from because the price has worked and my sellers are happy. And so here's a good class. That's what standing up looks like. It looks like creating a better reality for people. And that's not, I mean, it sounds mushy, right? But it's not doing, it's not happening right now. Instead, we have this. You don't like how somebody priced it. You call and you scream and you cry and yell. Well, I mean, when babies cry, you know why they cry, right? They're hungry or they're wet or they're tired. And that's pretty much it. Sometimes they need to be snuggled, but babies are generally, you can change them and feed them and get them to go to sleep and they're all right. I just have to wonder how many agents need to be fed. Well, you know, maybe that's why we're gonna have some challenges coming out of the great unknown here because they can't have their lunch and learns and broker opens with free food. And how many of them need to be changed? Well, I'm gonna invite them to classes to help change them. And how many of them need to take a nap? I frankly think that's why NAR has made sure we do have that telehealth available. I mentioned yesterday, mental health is included. That's part of taking a nap because we do have a, a physical reaction when we're out of whack. So I'll also recommend to you this, when you're considering the relationships with your colleagues and how we solve the hiding from each other, nastiness, the lack of communication, the drop balls, when you see a colleague post something online, instead of knee-jerk turning them in or saying crap to them or making a nasty comment back, what if you picked up the phone and called them and just checked on them? Because we know that how to solve a baby's issues. We should also know how to solve other humans' issues. Because if we're thinking about the holistic part of the human, they've got somebody they love and they're sleeping with and they've got kids or grandkids, nieces, nephews, neighbors. They've got some loneliness. They've got some confidence issues. They've got some questions. They've got things going on. So maybe what they posted had to do with a lot of other things and we shouldn't pile on to it. There was one of the agents in my market and I've known her my whole 20 years in the business and I love her. She is a straight shooter. Y'all think I'm direct. I don't think this woman has any fluff in her vocabulary. And so she's like, burp, burp, burp. love her. She's a good agent. She's ethical, does a great job. I wish I could do all my deals with her. Well, she made this post online and she said, if your agent won't show you a house, I will. And I was like, oh, that does not sound like the girl I know. That sounds like she's trying to cross agency lines. So I called her and I said, girlfriend, I said, are you all right? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. But she was, you know, like this. I said, talk to me a little bit. I said, I saw your post on Facebook. I said, and that sounds like you're crossing agency lines and you've never done that. You're one of my favorite agents in town. What is going on? And she said, I'm just tired of these agents that won't show their clients houses when the clients want to go see it and we can safely do it. And I was like, Okay, so you're trying to tell people that you're willing to work and you've got safe guidelines in place. And if other agents aren't, then you're glad to help. She's like, yes. I'm like, all right, so how about you go delete what you wrote? Because that doesn't sound like you. This one does. And she took it down. And she called me later and she said, man, I was so worked up when I typed that. I wasn't even thinking. I said, I know, girl. I said, but I value you. You. And if we value each other, not just as realtors, but as humans, how much does that solve? It's like we were talking yesterday in the building and managing your people. You have to solve for the relationship. How do we nurture and care for each other as humans so that we can have better relationships, which lead to better communication, which leads to more business, which leads us to better transactions when we're better to each other? And it's not about turning people in. I have, I declared it for years. You have got to turn people in for their false, you know, accusa their accusations and they're breaking the code of ethics and all the nastiness that goes on out there. But I always lean into what my daddy told me. I, I have the best dad ever. Y'all ever get to meet him. He's a love bug. And he always said he would rather believe in the good in people and occasionally be wrong than believe in the bad in people and occasionally be proven right. And that's what I want us to think about as we consider rebuilding these relationships. If your seller didn't respond to you by text, what if you picked up the phone and called them and said, hey, I sent you a text. I just wanna make sure it didn't get lost in all the stuff going on. 
Or what if the agent wrote something on Facebook and instead of you immediately turning them in for their bad actions, you called and found out they did not mean anything ugly by it and they fixed it. Now, of course, if she did mean to be ugly, I'd have totally turned her in. So, right, you just make sure you know that. I give them a chance first. And if it's the buyer that you were all cool with at the open house who went away, what if you reached out again and said, hey, I just previewed a really cool house that seemed interesting. I wasn't sure if it fits y'all or not, but I was thinking about you and thought I'd say, hey, does that start to fix some of the issues that we have around the loss of humanity and the loss of conversation? And, and what if you call your elected officials and instead of telling them all the things they're doing wrong and I'm going to shake my fist and I'm going to get you primary and you suck. What if you called them and said, hey, I bet your desk is completely full, but I just wanted to tell you that I live in your district and I don't have the foggiest idea what you're doing with the job that we gave you, but I appreciate you doing it. Would that change how the conversation goes? There's so many ways we can fix a lot of the ghosting issues and how we can get better at this. And actually, this is a perfect time for you to ask that question, David. He says, how do you not get ghosted by leads? David, I'm gonna tell you, it's by being more human in your follow-up and less realtory in your follow-up. Because we're taught in real estate training to follow up with the sellers. What do you follow up with? Would you like an updated CMA? I'll do a free CMA. Would you like to have a CMA? Why do we, why? Who charges for a CMA? And I know there's always a realtor in the market that I charge for a CMA. No, you don't. You credit it back at closing like the rest of us would. I mean, come on. But you think about it. It's the same thing everybody says. And so if you're reaching out to your leads with the same thing everybody says, why would they respond to you? And what if you're, you're by your leads, you're reaching back out to them, the response rate is super low for online leads. Here's how you get them to respond to you, David. You have a smartphone like I do, okay? This is what I started doing in 2011. So anybody that's been teaching it totally stole it from me, but I don't mind because I like being right and so I'm cool with that. So I'm gonna turn off my virtual background for a second here, which by the way, the reason I have my town behind me and that's a half a block from my office is because I want to remind people that I'm a practicing realtor in Concord, North Carolina. So if y'all are on Zoom calls, get a pretty background that shows where you work. I mean, uh, you need to be marketing with your Zooms. So anyway, get your smartphone, hold it this a ways, okay? So in a landscape format, put it in selfie mode, hold it up so your chins go back. This saves you 10 pounds. And you're gonna make a little video, a little selfie video that just says, hey, David, I'm Lee Brown. I just sent you a text. You asked about my listing. Listen, if you got questions, schools, taxes, whatever, I'm always glad to help. And I'll be following up again too. Talk to you soon, boom. 10 seconds. My buyer leads respond to me because every other agent that they reached out to sent them back a text, sent them back an email, maybe picked up the phone and called them. I don't know how many of them send a video back because most realtors are so chicken to video. You actually do this face on the screen right here when I tell y'all to do video because you're like, I'm too old, I'm too fat, I'm too ugly, I don't sound good, I don't know what to say, blah, 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 all your excuses. When in reality, if you send that little tiny video back, they get to hear your voice and see your face. And they're like, oh, well, David's a human. Oh, well, let me just ask him right quick. And they respond back. It's enormous to show a little bit of your humanity and tell people this is who I am. I'm not some skeezy, Phil Dunphy. I'm not that Annette Benning character in American Beauty. I'm a neighbor over here running a real estate business. With my seller leads, I started doing this with sellers was the first time I did it. And y'all that have, yes, Jacqueline, that is video and I send it by text. Uh-huh. So once upon a time, I would just natively send it from my phone right directly to theirs. And for those of y'all that are like, oh, but what if it's a landline? Well, then you're going to get back that thing from Verizon that says you have texted a landline. Then I know I have old people and I just pick up the phone and call them video. not going to do any good. And then if your person that says, oh, but... But, but uh-uh, quit with all the buts and keep it to 10 seconds. I'm not going to tell them all the, I'm a number one this and been in the business 20 years that. It's my name, my company, 
which house they called about. I'll answer your questions on schools and taxes. And I do it with sellers as well to say, I got your inquiry. I love your neighborhood. Porter's Landing is amazing. And I've probably even run by your house because I run in that neighborhood. So I can't wait to talk to you. So as a runner, that's pretty much always what I say because I have run by pretty much every house here. So think about how you can be you, be the least ghosty version of yourself. Because if everybody else is in hide and seek mode and you make yourself fully available, what does that mean? That tells them that's how you're going to market. That's how you're going to respond to buyers. You tell buyers that's how quickly you're going to move when the right house hits the market, that you're thinking of them, that it's real. The buyer that I've got to write an offer with here when I get off my call with you is an elderly lady and her children are encouraging her while bossing her, making her buy a house near them. And she's tired of listening to her kids. She likes talking to me. And why does she like talking to me? Because I talk to her about her dead husband and her kids won't talk about him because they miss him too much. And I'm like, tell me about John. And I get her talking about him. And then when we talk about the house, I'm like, what would John think? And she knows that I'm hearing her and paying attention and helping her move through these stages. And that's what gets your buyers and sellers to respond to you. Maybe at the open house, David, they said, man, this is a cool fireplace. And when you send them a little video, you say, you know, y'all mentioned you really like the fireplace. So I'm just curious if I were to see a house out there, is that one of the must haves or is that just the wish list? Ask a question that's going to encourage them to respond. Too often we ask little questions like, would you like me to set you up on a VIP home search to alert you to houses when they hit the market? Do you know how gross that sounds? That's gross and it's icky and I would never respond to that as buyer because I'm gonna ask y'all a question here. I have a 14 year old and a 15 year old and those of you that know me super well, you're not allowed to answer the question because you already know. But if I were buying a house in Orange County from an Orange County Realtor, see from the Orange County Realtors, Cassie? So if I were buying a house there, what's my number one my criteria? What's the number one thing I have to have? And there's often people that say, oh, it must be the best schools. Nope, not the best schools. I like the medium schools because then my kids will be super shining stars. Ah, ah, ah. See, you gotta be thinking about how you get your perfection good but that's not even the most important thing because I could homeschool I'd be an amazing teacher frankly y'all would come sit in class all day and learn things but what I'm most going to be concerned about is children's medical care because my son has intense medical issues I need a pediatric nephrologist and a pediatric urologist so I'm going to ask you where they're located if you respond to me with well let me set you up with a VIP home search that doesn't tell me anything but what if you respond to that buyer lead and say I can talk about this house for years because I kind of love it, but tell me what's most important to you, schools, doctors, parks, the house, what is it? What if you made it more open-ended? Let them tell you more. Too often we're like bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, acreage. And then when you talk to somebody that's not sure what they're doing or they're renting or this is a big thing for me, buy your lead comes in, oh, we're renting. What do realtors do? They drop it. They're like, ah, it's a renter. I don't do renters. Well, what if you called that renter back and said, well, this one's not for rent, but have you ever thought about buying a house? Low key, chill, opens the door. I'll tell you, that's one of the ways we can solve our fair housing issues, right? Is instead of thinking about who our A++ buyers are, it's opening that door. So have you ever thought about buying a house? Well, yeah, we have, but our credit sucks and we're five years away. And you're like, oh, that's cool because I've got a lender. I've got three of them and they can put a plan together for you. You want me to have them reach out to you so we can put a plan together five years down the road? I mean, honestly, y'all, I have 12 years left on my mortgage. And so as long as you buy in the next 12 years, I can help you. Do you know how many buyers laugh when I tell them that? They fall out laughing because they think it's hilarious that I tell them how long I'm in the business. But it makes me less pushy. They know they don't have to buy today. I'm cool. I got 12 years left. They got time. I always tell them like you're 13. It's a total toss up. Not sure if I'm around or not. But once somebody says I've thought about it, what if you just became the one who opened the door? That's, that's it to solve fair housing, y'all. That's your job. Open doors. Which doors? Whichever ones they want to open. Because this, this little person here, not the mom and dad. I'm sure they're lovely people. It's the little one, right? Kids do better in stable households. 
kids do better in school. They go one notch up on the ladder from their parents, if not two, when the household is stable. And so when you ask somebody, you ever thought about buying a house? What if you're changing her world forever? You're changing their whole financial foundation for the future. And if you're hiding from buyers, and if you're hiding from sellers because they didn't give you the answer you wanted, are you slowing down this family's financial future? Don't, don't give up on people. Sometimes they ghost you. I told you this before. They're ghosting you because of something else in their world. And the something else in their world might be a lack of confidence. It might be a belief that there's no hope that they could ever solve their 500 credit score. But y'all know you've worked with buyers. They went through a nasty divorce. It hammers your credit. It hammers your finances. They might not believe that their future could change until you believe in them. So what if you just keep reaching back? Hey, just checking in, not trying to be a pest or anything, but told y'all I got 12 years left on my mortgage, so I'd check in, ha ah. And that goes across really well in video. By text or email, that sounds kind of cold and harsh. When I do it in video, people are like, I know, I know, yeah, we're good. We don't need anything right now. We're not sure, I'm like, that's cool. I'm here when you need me, no big deal. And I'll tell you that when I talk about fair housing, there's a ton of new campaign assets that just came out. And y'all, if you haven't gone to look at them, they're really good. And it's in the fair housing vein because that's the conversation right now. We've had the pride conversation continues to go on because until people stop caring who somebody else is sleeping with, we're gonna continue to have issues. So what if you just think about yourself as the one that's glad, I'm glad to help. I don't care where you buy. Y'all know what color I care about, right? Green, right? The color of money, just think about you don't get paid till they're happy. I want people happy. And then maybe one day I'll get paid. We gotta make sure this conversation is going in the right direction. And it's not about hollering at people, shaming them, yelling at them, calling them names. It's about opening doors and saying, come on in. Let me help you with the path. Let me help you with the plan. I'm here. And you will still get ghosted by people, right? There'll be people that aren't ready. That's cool. Tell them you're here. There'll be people that found another agent. That's cool. I hope your agent's amazing. Here's the MLS number. There'll be other agents that aren't cool. You invite them to classes. One day they might be the one who cracks, shows up at the association and has this amazing idea that makes us all better. You never know until you open that door. Because the one thing we know about realtors, this is who we are. We're not about commissions but that's the bulk of what we show in our social profiles. Do you ever wonder if maybe that's why we get ghosted? Do you ever wonder if a buyer pulled you up on Facebook and Instagram and said, mm -uh, uh -uh. so what if you talk about your community more, the place where you live, the parks where you walk, the garden that you saw down the street, the cool feature you saw in a house, and let people know that you're a human who cares about all neighbors where you live and you care about the whole picture. I love y'all, but some of your social profiles does not make me want to reach out to you. You don't look like you want to have a conversation. So open that door too. Because when people understand that you, the realtor, are a micro business inside the community and you're a neighbor too, it changes how they think about all of us. So I told y'all yesterday, here's all the free stuff. It's over at 555-888, text the word kicktail. It's totally not related to this webinar series. It's just everything I teach in all my classes. And so just knock yourself out and download away. And just for the record, it was like two people who downloaded yesterday. So either y'all didn't need any free stuff or you just forgot, but for real, you can go to learnwithlee.com as well. I do make you sign up now, but I only send newsletters when I feel like it. And that's very sporadic as anybody's on my newsletter list can tell you. So I'm um, also check out my podcast, Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And if you want to be on it, let me know because I feature normal realtors telling their own stories. And there's my social handles. And oh, Shandy's being sweet. She's recommended my books. The third book, I just did the voice recording for Audible last week. So it'll be out real soon. It's a, a freaking year behind and I'm gonna blame COVID. Although frankly, it was um, me trying to go with an editor and a publisher and then I ruled that out because it was a mess. And so thank you for recommending my books. They are 45 minute realtor reads because <laughs> I know my audience. But anyway, there's my handles. We have one more session we're gonna have together. For those of y'all that asked, the 
session from yesterday is recorded. Read it out to your, um, reach out to staff for it. And I'm going to put it here, text the, I'll put it in the chat block for you, Jean. Text the word kicktail to 555-888. And by the way, if you're texting that on an iPhone, it's going to try and put a space between kick and tail. And you need to backspace and make it one word because my iPhone thinks I'm typing the word ducking all the time. I have never needed to duck anything. And so if your iPhone does the same thing, it messes with kicktail. So fix that and just download to your heart's content. Reach out to your staff at Orange County Realtors <laughs> for the recording. If I still say OCAR, it's Wayne's fault. And reach out to your volunteer leadership, guys. Everybody serving this association in 2020 had zero expectation of serving by Zoom. They had ideas for making you better. They love you. They're giving their time and energy to you. Thank them for leading in an oddball time and thank your staff. Your staff has worked really hard to make sure that y'all continue to have educational opportunities and that you have chances to network in whatever place we are so that you can get better. So thank you staff for bringing me in. Thank you for volunteering my volunteers. Karen, the email to request the link for yesterday, I guess reach out to Cassie or to Jonathan or just uh, reach out to Dave because your CEO loves to hear from his members and he's delightful. And oh, look, Sabrina, she's on it. Look, she says they're at ocrealtors.org slash Vimeo, which is for members. And Dan, thank you for three more exclamation points. Jonathan's going to win the over under on this unless you give me a whole bunch of exclamation points. But anyway, I love y'all. Please think about how you can go one step beyond where you are right now in your humanity and in your relationships and in the way that we can make real estate different amongst ourselves, which bleeds out to our clients, which bleeds out to our communities, which makes the entire country better. Let me check our questions here. You do have the best association CEO and staff. And how does the text work? When you go to your text, David, Go to compose message and the two line is 555-888 and the word will be kick tail. And then apparently it sends you stuff or signs you. I'm not really sure how the technology works because I'm medium aged, but that should work. So I love y'all. If you need anything, you know where to find me and I'll see you tomorrow and challenge, invite somebody who wasn't here today because they might need this more than they've ever admitted. And please take care of each other. Go have a good day.